Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It's 830 and we'll start off our uh, weekly Board of Supervisors meeting. I'm going to call this meeting to order. I'm Darren Hamilton, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors at this time. Um, all right, first on our agenda is acknowledge the minutes of the previous meetings. Um, we had uh, we just had the uh, one set of min minutes from June twentieth. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Drish, a second from Sanquist to approve the minutes of the June meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we'll move on then to uh, meet with our county engineer, Dwayne Hines. Dwayne is on Zoom with us this morning, so go ahead and Good morning, supervisors. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Outstanding. I uh, appreciate you guys putting up with me not being there. I've been a touch under the weather and don't want to share it with anyone. Mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot this week, although I looked at the calendar and Thursday will be one full year working for you guys. Uh, yes. I'd like to say yeah. thank you for putting up with me. I've enjoyed it. and uh, It's been an educational and rewarding experience. Um, the contract rock is continuing. Uh, we're doing a little bit of other maintenance, but most of the forces are pretty well involved with putting rock on the roads and trying to improve those things um, for the traveling public and keep everybody safe. I think the only thing we have in front of you guys is the contract for the 2022 crack fill and partial depth patch project with Denco. Um, that should be in your packet. I yes, hope. it is. Ready? Uh, I think Darren's the only one that needs to sign it, but we discussed it some last week, and I didn't know if you guys had had a chance to review that and had any questions. Is there any questions on this contract? And the total cost of the contract is $261,978. Um, the project will include flaggers, pilot car, HMA patch material, patch, partial depth patch uh, by area, uh, mobilization, crack and joint clean and seal, and sealer material. That is correct. Since we were... Not that Quite sig significantly I'm under budget, we're going to look into adding 185th from Highway 1 to Pleasant Plain to the contract. It's only a two-mile stretch, three-mile stretch, so it won't be a great increase to the contract quantity, and I think the, the road justifies it. Mm -hmm. It's newer pavement, and we want to keep it in good condition. Okay. Okay. All right, so I would accept a motion to allow the chair of the supervisors to sign the uh, contract. And uh, we have a, co a copy of the contractor's uh, performance bond in here. Um, I'll make a motion. To I'll second that motion. Okay, I have a motion from Grish, a second for a motion from Sandquist, a second from Grish to approve authoriz authorizing uh, the contract for crack and seal and HMA patching uh, by Denco. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. So we'll move on to uh, discuss and consider I only need to sign one, so you well, can that keep yours. I, this one that I have is signed as well. So um, we're going to move just... on to discuss and consider resolution to hire Austin Alman as a deputy sheriff for the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. Bart. Y yes, I, I have Austin Alman here today. I'd like to introduce him to everybody here little facts about it. He was born and raised in Keokuk, Iowa. 
He is a uh, graduate of Culver Stockton College with a bachelor's in criminal justice and a minor in psychology. Mm -hmm. um, he did a few years at Cornell in Mount Vernon. Like to hear that. Uh, he has three years law enforcement with the Fairfield Police Department. He is married with twin girls that are a year and a half, and his wife works for Jefferson County as a correction officer. Okay, so I'd like so, you to welcome us. Is this a replacement position? Yes, it is. And okay. it's in your budget? Yes. All right, we'll make a motion to approve. Okay, I have a motion to approve the hire for the Sheriff's Department of Austin Allman. Um, do I have a second on that? Then we can have a discussion. Okay, second. Okay, I have a motion from Sandquist, a second from Grish. Uh, discussion. You know, Austin, welcome. Thank you. I am uh, wondering whether there's going to be any conflicts having your wife working in the same building with you. No, I, we've been working together hand in hand with, for the past couple of years now. Oh, okay. We we try to not act like we're married when we're at work. Most, most people do. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you. Okay, welcome. So, any more discussion? D. No, since this is all part of your existing budget, and Correct. this is replacement of an existing officer. It's not adding an officer to your staff. Existing deputy okay. sheriff. That's the deputy only. Sheriff, yes. That's the only discussion I have on this. Um, your the resolution for this, or your recommendation for this, is Austin Elman has been hired, or will be hired as deputy sheriff for Jefferson County with a starting date of July 1st, 2022. His salary will begin at $59,088.20 per year. He will be increased to full pay once his probationary period is completed. Correct. So um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries. Welcome to the forest. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. So moving along, um, we have okay, that's that same resolution. So <laughs> Go. All right. Um, this one is the same thing. So we're going to move on to uh, discuss and consider resolution for committing funds for sheriff's parking pavement project. We have a resolution in front of us that reads. Whereas Jefferson County Sheriff has $108,051.75 within his fiscal year 2021-2022 general basic budget for the purpose of front parking lot and east side deputy parking lot pavement. And whereas this project will not be completed before the end of July 2021, 2022 fiscal year and whereas Jefferson County Sheriff will have an excess of $108,051.75 in unexpected general basic fund budget at the end of the fiscal year 2021-2022 and whereas Jefferson County Sheriff desires to complete the paving project in fiscal year 22 2022-2023, and whereas the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors is permitted to impose constraints on amounts within the general basic fund balance, limiting expenditure to specific purposes. 
Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Jefferson County hereby commit $108,051.75 in general basic fund balance for the county sheriff's front parking lot and east side deputy parking lot pavement project passed this day or the 27th day of June, 2022. Okay. Um, and we talked about this last week. This is just the paperwork. Yes. Correct. Yeah, I, I guess I was under the impression it was under 120,000. It was like 90,000 cities so going to pay 33. The, the, the front parking area, both of those were thrown in. The front um, parking area is just under 90. Okay. And then the uh, East side deputy parking is 19,000 and change. It's 120. Okay. So it totals 108. And then you pay the total and then the city reimburses. Yes, I'll share. pay 100. The 100% is 108. And so is this, they're going to reimburse the third. The city is, who's been on the radio that they were paying 33,000. So when will they come and say we're paying a third of what they're doing for the kids? No, I think I issue? think initially they were basing theirs off of the hundred thousand, just as you were talking mm -hmm. about, with only the front parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, but this includes both parking lot projects. Yeah. I just, so I just didn't want Bart to have to pay all that. Well, it, I, it's going to be a hundred percent through my budget and anyway. not get reimbursed. The, the county the itself, share. they should get the correct I mean. share. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But under ninety, it would be under thirty thousand a third. So mm -hmm. I think they must be figuring that because when we had the one meeting, we discussed. Okay. And there's still another portion in the back that needs to be completed, but that mm -hmm. hasn't been put in. Yeah. So, so we talked both these sections. They've talked about paying for the front part. Are they on board with this other part too? Um, so I can double check question. on that. Um, I wasn't at the last service agency meeting. I don't think minutes, that went so. into that detail, yeah. did we? we I don't think about... we went into that detail with it. Mm -hmm. We had talked about the different paving projects, but I think we were mentioning just the front parking lot the front one. paving project at that time. <laughs> and I know because so. you've been able to be frugal in some areas in your budget, you've got the money to do it. So, um, and I know at the meeting before we did discuss that 19,000 <laughs> the city. Mm -hmm. We discussed doing both well, projects so because it's easier to get them there and get the second piece done sure. at the yeah, same right. time. You can sure. lose the scale. Yes. No, I think you need to go ahead and do it, but we need to make sure we know they're on board with the first part so the next service agency meeting we need to talk about the rest of it okay according to uh team <coughs> yeah it was what was the proof the parking lot, the parking lot. and our one minute but, meeting but for the 30 percent 33 that would have been at the city council meeting yeah. that they would have had to approve that and so that would just be approving the, what they what bart wants to do in front of the law center Mm -hmm. not the side right. you know, that's possible you know, okay well, I'm, just, I'm not 100 percent sure as to whether they did not know that we were going to also put in that parking along with that so i, I just think we need to make sure we're going to get reimbursed mm -hmm. okay so the resolution is in front of us um do i have a motion in a second to approve the resolution I'll move to approve it. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion from Sandquist, a second from Grish to approve the resolution as read for the parking lot pavement at the sheriff's um, office jail for a total of $108,051.75. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Yep. Okay, next Jay. Next item on our agenda is to discuss and consider the use of CARES funding for public health department.
Okay. So um, we have not received, the three of us as the board have not really received what that total amount of money is yet from the auditor's office or had it been reported to us. There's nothing in the packet that goes along with that. She um, sent an email out. She sent an email out. Would okay. you like to see it there? It's... No, I think I can pull that up. Okay. Could quickly. I look at that, Chris? Yes. She sent it on Wednesday, I think, is the yeah. date on there. Yeah. Yeah. Let me have that so I can make a copy of it. Sure. There's the whole letter, is, or there's a whole explanation on the back of that. <laughs> Do you want a copy of this? Yeah, please. I have one. <clears throat> I don't think I have any notes written on it, so that's I hope I don't. <laughs> Darren, would since you, that's my copy, give <laughs> me a copy as well. Sure, please. I <laughs> Yes, please. And we see how they get possible. Yeah. I think that's an original. Here's one for Susie, mm -hmm. and then you can give that comment if you want to be. Thank you. No notes. <laughs> I don't know. Can we know how many papers I got on my desk? <laughs> Hand to Connor or you, whichever. This is There you go. Yep. All right. Okay.
Okay, so where do we want to start discussion? I don't know. I just have a point of clarification, just so you guys know. So we're all talking the same numbers. Uh, the first on the eleven twenty four of twenty, that seventeen thousand three hundred ninety five dollars and some change. That was actually a one time payment, separate. It was considered like CARES money. It came from the Iowa Department of Public Health, though. So that was specific money sent from IDPH to the health department. So that wouldn't have. Um, that was part of the response versus putting it in a grant process. Every county got a, a stipend from IDPH, and that's what that 17,000 right. and some changes for, just to clarify. Sure. So of the um, of this money, of this CARES funding that was reimbursed for the biggest majority of the health department salaries, um, the health department utilized $69,973 of those dollars of the entire um, CARES funding. Right. So that's why I'm here today to have this discussion. I wasn't aware uh, uh, that the that the dollars were all put back to the general fund. So that's that's why it warranted a conversation. Um, if you look at Pat's, if you look at Pat McEvan, and I know he's on, he was, he still is. Hi, Pat. Um, on page three of the document, you know, it's uh, in quotes, you know, Jamie Cashman, you know, the county is strongly encouraged to use these fund for COVID-19 related expenses that said there's no penalty for utilizing these, these funds in, a, in, a, in any lawful manner, just for the people that don't have this document in front of them. I think it's important that, I mean, it discusses other things in the health department. Uh, there were some other county departments that had a little bit of expenditure with the COVID mitigation, but not like, not like the health department, obviously. Anyway, with that being said, that's why I asked it to be on the agenda the way that it was. But what are we at being asked to do? I'm at, I was asking you, and this encompasses last week's meeting as well. Um, 
I guess the best place for me to start as a department manager is at the very beginning of the budget process for FY23. Um, that way everybody understands the reason for the questions. Um, so the Board of Health approved a budget for FY23 for $522,067. The Board of Supervisors came back with a budget of $473 and $473,501. So when you look at the bottom line of the budget, that looks like a difference of $48,566. However, I just wanna paint the picture so it's a more accurate description of what we're really looking at. As you know, according to last week's meeting and as a department manager, um, this is the first time that the departments have had the full um, expenditure for insurance placed in their department. So this is the first time. So. Um, there was an increase in my budget line item of $28,484. So if you take that $28,000 out of my bottom line of the budget, the difference is $77,000 from the Board of Health ask to what the supervisors approved in FY23. That is, that is, that is more than, um, I mean, the two nursing assistants that we were going to replace one with an office manager their salaries were, I mean, that's not, I mean, you cannot do that. I'd like to know how you can replace a position um, when you have a budget cut of $77,000. That's that, that is two people's positions. Um, and we are only going to replace one. So I guess um, the issue is when I, uh, so there's that, I just want to make sure we're on the same page of that because I have the budget right here and some other notes. And you guys are all fully aware of that. We have, we discussed that at the work session, at the joint work session. You guys know that as the supervisors. Um, so that's a significant budget cut to a health department um, or any department. So that was why I came last week to ask about the hiring of an office manager or administrative assistant. Just to clarify, I don't need your permission to hire somebody. The reason I came to you was to ask for the funding with that position. And Darren made it clear last week at the Board of Health meeting that that was not the case, that I could indeed hire somebody, but I don't know where that funding is going to come from because I don't have that money in my budget to hire That's somebody. Right. And so I'm handing out this information that came from public health that shows D our gonna... budget is in the top. <clears throat> Um, let's see, fifteen percent of the state of Iowa County. So I did some research last week. The, I don't want to talk about that. We talked about that. Burdett has sent an email addressing that fifteen percent. What that is is the backfill of the county that has to pay. That's my ask to you after we deduct all the revenue. That is not. That is what the county gives to the health department after the revenue is put in there. That if you, so I will much, give you, we are not in the top 15%. We can call Burdette now if she's working and she can address that for you because be you're helpful. misinterpreting the document. You're misinterpreting well, says, that document. County tax dollars help support public health. Please contact your local public health agency to learn more about how they are funded, county tax allocation of ranges. So what I did was I took the 2020 census D, I don't Based want to talk about new, this again. This is I am We're going to hear from our supervisor at this point. And I can copy this, but our new counties that are like size based on the 2020 census are Hardin, Iowa, Madison, Crawford, Clay, Jefferson, Floyd, Page, Hamilton, Kasuth, and Harrison. Jefferson is 48th rank in the size of the counties. And so this was budget year, I think it's 2021. So these were the data available. So I've got, I'll make copies of this so everybody's got the same page. But basically I looked and found that the counties that are over what our county has budgeted, still do home health care, some do case management, some do in-home services. One has a blood pressure clinic, a foot clinic, elderly waiver, and things like that. The smaller ones, I haven't had time to research yet, but I just wanted to get a feel for where we are on the right size counties because we've lost population. I think it's important we recognize what our county can afford. So yes. It's our job to set the overall budget mm -hmm. and 
your board can do what they want within that. And that's you're, where we are. The, you're, you're misrepresenting that document. And if you let me step out, I'll call the debt because that is not that's how that fine. document is to be interpreted. Okay. That is not how that document is to be interpreted. So, and, and again, helpful. I can't say that, I mean, you know, that's kind of putting her in a, an, uh, in a difficult position, but that is not how that document is to be interpreted. Again, it has nothing to do with my ask today. Again, that document keeps bringing its head Well, up. it's part of the overall budget. And what I'm trying to show is we have quite a reasonable budget for the county of our size. And again, the ones that have a lot of funding on here have other services that we're not providing. Well, one of them has a certified hospice. So um, all the public health provide different services based on what they can afford and the resources available in their communities. Okay, so for the good of the order, this is Burdette Davis. She's my regional community health consultant for the Iowa Department of Public Health. She's gonna once again explain the document. So go ahead, Burdette, please. We're looking at that graphic that you handed out during Board of Health orientation. There seems to be some confusion with the 15% and the highest Jefferson County being in the highest county percentage. So if you okay, could so, go ahead, thank you. So I wanna make sure that you're looking at, it's a teal color with a woman in the left-hand side. Yep. Yep. And the bottom says January, 2022? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that data is for the entire state of Iowa. The, the information is derived from a public health survey that was completed by each county and submitted in August of 2021. They will be repeating that in August of 22. And the data is reflective of a time period of July 1st of 2020 to June 30th of 2021. The top left-hand corner with the woman explains relationship to the percentage of women um, and so forth. So as you go across the very bottom, Right hand corner where it is a gold, goldenrod color says county tax allocation is derived from a question on the survey that specifically asks the amount of county tax dollars given to a public health agency that is the deficit. So, what that means is it is not the amount that you budget but is the deficit amount. So if an agency has expenditures of 300,000 and they bring in revenue of 100,000, the difference is 200,000. And that is the value that was placed or reported in that question. And when I looked at Jefferson's data, they received in a deficit funded $116,000 in FY21, which puts them in that 45, 49%. I, I don't have that sheet in front yeah. of me. No, that's helpful for that. Thank you. That's new information for us. Well, it's not new information. That's the information that has always been there. And so if there is, uh, if the, if the title of the, the graph is misleading, then we regret that because the title was intended to demonstrate, plus the narrative was intended to demonstrate how various counties receive funding from the county. So, for example, um, like the Hasta County, theirs is a contract because they are a hospital-based agency. So there's the contract amount. So that narrative was also to explain that it is the amount of money that is provided uh, after expenditures and revenue are, are taken into account. And like I said, and that actually comes from a survey question. So okay. it's not just something we pick up. It was reported to the department, and then we put it into that infographic. Thank you. That's helpful. So this is... Sure. It would be helpful when they revise this to just say this is from a survey question. We could do that. So it would be clear. We could do that. Thank you. Sure. Because if the supervisors, what we're looking at is the overall budget, because that's our, our charge. 
Yeah, that's not the overall budget right. amount. It is the amount that was actually contributed as a deficit funded. And maybe that's, maybe, well, and I know the reason why I didn't use deficit funded is, again, because some counties, it's a contracted right. set yes. contract to the amount. So yeah. that's, that was the um, where that information came from and what it represents. Okay, so that's a survey question. Okay, thank you. Yes. Does yes. anybody else have any questions for Burdette while she's on the phone? No. Thank you, Burdette. I will. Sure. I, I appreciate you being available to us. Thank you so much. Sure. Have a great sure. day. You too. Bye thank bye. you. Bye. Okay, so that. Okay. That's so, the same information. Just to clarify, Burdette presented that information during your new board of health orientation, of which you, you right. and Susie yeah. were invited. Yeah. So she said the same information then. So that's why I get frustrated when we have the same conversation again and again. I just wanna clarify that our local public health grant we, uh, for FY23, we never know that amount when we're doing the budget process because you guys know how state grants, uh, state does their budget. So that is $59,577. And our Child Care Nurse Consultant grant, the total is 99,571. However, you have to take 15,000 from that um, because they're going to use that for special uh, in uh, special care provider uh, incentives to keep our daycare homes and centers uh, moving forward. So that is some, those are the big can revenue. Can you say those again, please? Yes, I can. Our local public health services grant is $59,577. So 59577. The child care nurse consultant grant of which pays a portion of Mandy and Tammy's salary, the total, and I don't know if you want to look at the total because the total will be coming into our budget, but then it'll be expended, is 99,571. And I confirmed those numbers with Tammy Weijin Kesterson, the early childhood Iowa director. So when you have a contract like with ECI, mm -hmm. does that cover all of like the new salary? It, co it, it covers the biggest majority of it, but we've done some changing because Tammy uh, is now a child care nurse consultant mm -hmm. and a certified car seat tech. So I don't put all of the money to one employee. It's kind of split between two based on what they're doing. Now, I did not add in the, the current contract that we have with Marion County for Child Care Nurse Consultant Services. That's a 10 county area and the state has expanded that. So there's more revenue within our department. So that's the deficit funding that Burdette has been talking about for several months. And is that contract up at the end of June, that one? No, the okay, state they, they extended it because good. it's a disaster within the, the process at the state level. So with that being said, now that we're all on the same page with that infographic that I'd like to burn at the stake because it's done nothing but cause confusion, confusion across the board. Um, so I still am looking at a budget cut. I'm still looking at no cares funding. I'm still at D, uh, these, okay. and I will tell you, I called uh, Cedar County because you referenced them the other day. Yeah, that's they have a, they have a countywide step longevity step that's going to go to effect July first. Yeah, and I know the public health director is the interim director, and she's making forty one dollars an hour. And I talked so, to the whoever I talked to in the auditor's office about that. And we'll have that conversation yeah. when we do the yeah. But, so back um, to the point at hand. I just want to clarify: I do not have enough money in my budget to hire an office person, whatever title you want to put on that. Okay, there's no money in the budget. It's been cut. Now there's no CARES funding. Um, I asked um, to be placed on today's agenda and I was denied that request. I wanted to be able to carry forward money um, as BART did, as Sheriff's Office did. I should have about $25,000, give or take. I wanted that money to be able to be carried forward in FY23 to help offset the expense of the new person. Historically, that's not been the practice and we know that. Um, we, we, I've been here for 14 years and that's not the practice. So the money goes back to the general fund. And then we come to the supervisors to ask for a budget amendment. Um, again, why I was here last week was to ask for the hiring, the permission to hire with that assumption, my board at the meeting last week, with the exception of Darren, all felt coming to this supervisor meeting was approving the hire, meaning approving the funding to hire that position. That's not the case. So please explain to me professionally how I can do that. There's a couple options on the table, um, or if you're telling me that I can't hire somebody, I need to know that too, and then we'll move forward as a board. So Chris, I was under the assumption you could hire, you can hire. I don't have the money in my budget. Susie. I know, but you can hire. The problem is the money. 
Yeah. I can't hire then. That's yeah. semantics. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, we, you keep saying we can't I can't hire. hire if there's money in the budget. I understand season. that. So how much money do you think you need? Enough to fund a position. And how much is that? It, I, de I, it depends on what we, what this, uh -huh. I have eight resumes right now. Uh-huh. Um, so it depends on the skill set of that person. It so sure. anywhere from twenty to twenty five dollars an hour. That is what I penciled in, and that is what the board of health sent to you guys as the board of supervisors. So that's what I penciled in. I penciled in twenty five because you can always go down. It's more difficult to go up. Um, and just for the good of the order, there's you know been some discussion about the budget process within the health department. Um, the there is times when I give money back. However, it's not a significant amount. Um, I cannot run a budget that tight when there, you have uh, expenditures. You want to make sure you have enough money in your budget process to pay your employees. You want to make sure that you have enough money in your budget to have small <clears throat> expenditures. So that is where I'm at. So if, if you don't want to approve the hire of somebody with the funding, that is your purview. However, I don't think that's fair and equitable across the board. From department to department. I think we worked really hard on the budget, and I hate to change it because then we're going to have other departments in there want to change theirs. I mean, it's to rise it up ones. Um, it looks like we're. Within other like sized counties, we're, we're within the ballpark given services that we're not doing home health care. Do you do know that home care is not a core function of public health? That's part of the reason we got rid of it. Right. That's part of the reason we decertified. But, but the and counties. You were fully aware of that when we did that. We know that. Well, and I'm just counties, clarifying for the people on the Zoom. The counties that are still offering it have higher budgets because of that. And the ones. And they have more staff as well, Dee. You, right. you have more staff. Right. We are down three staff members from three years ago. Because we're not doing that service. No, that's not the only reason. Peggy retired. We didn't replace her. The two nursing assistants took different, during the pandemic, we kept their positions full time because they were helping with public health response and clinics. You know how busy we were. Okay. So coming out of the pandemic, we had two people resign, one in January. So the, the person that was remaining was going to take on those responsibilities. So I didn't move forward quickly to hire somebody because, because we had somebody to finish those position, that position, somebody was in place to do that. Two weeks, two and a half weeks after the second employee tenured her resignation, that is when the FY22 budget was decreased. So it caused concern for the Board of Health to be able to hire somebody at that point. I'm having this point of discussion for everybody. So there's a lot of things that have moved forward. And again, if the board is telling me, no, they're not going to fund that position, then I need to know that. And I will let the, I will contact Jack and let him know that the board of supervisors is not going to fund the position. And how do I need to move forward with notification and cancellation of the job posting? Because I hadn't posted it till last week when we were here at the meeting, when you gave permission to hire somebody. I guess that's, so you're Wouldn't not going to you know the answer to that. I mean, so you're not going to allow the health department to carry forward twenty five thousand dollars, which is which is different than another department. How would it change next year, though? Um, will you have enough to accomplish what you need? Well, to I guess do? it depends on what you guys fund, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's really difficult to keep four people because we can't keeping just... a department going. When you look at the numbers, D, I had a seventy seven thousand dollar budget cut. 77,000, so, which is greater, which is the biggest budget cut I've ever had in 14 years, 15 years. I, I empathize with you. I, I see that everybody's point. Question. If we hadn't taken the 22,000 from you, could you have done this? I would have hired somebody sooner okay. after, I ten, after the second resignation was tenured. Yes. I did not know exactly where we were going to be. We were just coming out of a pandemic. I still okay, had expenditures. I, I get that. I get that. I'm just explaining. So are it you for saying people. if you had twenty two thousand, you could go ahead and hire this person? Not at this point. Not moving forward because my budget took a bigger hit. I don't understand. I don't understand what you guys don't understand about this budget. Really, 
I mean, when you have the numbers that I just presented, if you take the insurance allocation out, because that is a line item you cannot move, that is a set expense, just like your house payment, it's a set expense. And that was already figured for the five people, not the four. It is. I clarified with Shannon, it was calculated for four, for five people, because I did not know, because mm -hmm. that money was put into all of our department mm -hmm. departments this year. But if you take that off, if you take that $28,000 away from the bottom line of the budget, we had a $77,000 budget cut. So I can't make, I cannot generate money that's not there. So. Yeah, and if you look at this sheet with other like-sized counties, the counties. Do you do that again, with the other departments, Steve? Do you analyze every You know department? what? Yes. Yeah. When, when okay. we hired the engineer, I talked to multiple <laughs> county okay. engineers. And so I why asked this them, year is it so problematic coming out of a pandemic where we had our butts handed to us? And you don't you don't really uh, objectively look at that. So you have four nurses in a health department of which we generate over, you know, almost one hundred sixty thousand. It'll be more than one hundred sixty thousand dollars revenue. So do you look at how many how much revenue do other departments generate and give back to the general fund? Because this money doesn't stay in my budget, as you know. Right. So just for clarification purpose, because I don't think everybody understands that. When we generate revenue, it offsets salaries, it offsets expense, and it goes back to the general fund or it's a wash, so to speak, budgetary, the, the budget process. So that's my question. That's my question. And I think that history speaks for itself in this department. Yes, sometimes we do give money back. It's not a, a huge amount, um, but again, it's not arbitrarily thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars either. You can't run a budget that tight and not have some a uh, little bit of padding in there. That's budget 101. So it also um, doesn't look good for our county when nobody's in our office, which is gonna happen more and more. And for those that don't know, this is Tammy Merrill. She's our, one of our public health nurses, Chad the nurse consultant, and a first seat technician. You know, Tammy, I, I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. I was in there once getting a shot, and you had to answer the phone. Yeah. You know, that takes your attention away from the individual. I understand that. We don't have anybody to check people in for, for shots. So it's us. I understand all that. I, I'm sorry we took the money away from you guys. Um, I just think we have to come up with some kind of solution. Again, historically, when the budget is cut, the department manager is informed of that process. And then I take that information back to the Board of Health for discussion to figure out what we can do. That wasn't the case this, during this process, for whatever reason. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this discussion in an open meeting and have it on the agenda twice. It would have been handled pre-FY23. Here we are the last week of the fiscal year. Excuse me. Just curious, what would you be satisfied with? I want to be able to hire. I want to be guaranteed funding moving forward to hire an office assistant. You have money you're giving back to the, to the general fund. Yes, share. I just, yes, Susie, 20, about $25,000. And I asked to carry that forward to help mm -hmm. alleviate that. There's no process to guarantee that if I come to you March <laughs> or April, that you're going to approve a budget amendment. Historically, you've always approved a budget amendment. However, it's not practice to approve a budget amendment for salaries. That's never been the case. Mm -hmm. So I am not going to hire somebody arbitrarily and not have the money in my budget. That is not good budgeting and fiscal responsibility. So based on the fiscal 23-year budget as it stands now, do you have money to hire a part-time person? It would be tight. You, you know what the job market is. You know how much money people expect to be paid. If you have a certain skill set, you have to pay for that skill set. We just heard another department hire a full-time person at 55000 which is, you know, I, I, I didn't hear what the full what, salary what was. Is that for? 
your well, deputy, your, city, right. your new deputy. And congratulations. Yeah, but congratulations. That's, that's also someone that had left, but they are using the remainder of the salary for uh, that. They appropriated money for the salary for the employee that they're replacing for this next year, which mm -hmm. they left in their budget and did not remove just because the person left. And that's how a lot of that is taken care of. Other people that have received raises as of late, uh, say in the treasurer's department, they figured that from their actual budget that they were given. They didn't ask for more money. They didn't come in and say, please fund us higher than what we had asked for. And his budget was cut. And his budget was cut as well. We even asked him to make an additional cut to his budget at one point in time of nearly $5,000 in order to help bring down the tax levy that was going to be asked for the citizens here in the county. And he complied. Mm -hmm. Dear, and I so, understand that. And I respect your statements. I respect everybody's comments. However, I had $22,000 removed from my budget. The only reason that money was there because I didn't have two people in that apartment working. You took the money, the, the, the supervisors, the auditor took the $22,000 from my FY22 budget I couldn't hire somebody because I had a withdrawal decreased allocation for my department. I don't understand what, what we're, we're talking in circles. I had a current year budget cut. Okay. I had a budget cut moving forward. So when you're talking about semantics of a budget, I can't carry forward salary money when it's not there. And just for clarification purposes, you as the supervisors cannot change the salary line items. You as supervisors only control the bottom line of our budget. Pat McAvan can talk about this. That's true. But it, mm -hmm. when my budget came back, the line items were decreased in the salary FICA and IPERS, which is not appropriate budgetary process for the good of the order. That's Iowa code right here. And you can see the deductions. So this is not the first time you've seen this budget either. This was brought up at the, at the uh, joint session uh, joint work session between the Board of Health and the Board of Supervisors. That's probably the one where you had, what, 10% raise or something for people? No, D, that's the Board of Health. I will say this, the Board of Health at their last, for, for transparency purposes, I will say this. Within that budget that you just looked at, Susie, the Board of Health did approve um, a 10.5% raise for everyone. In FY23, that was taken. We did not move forward with that until last week at the meeting. And That's news for us. Well, it does. The board, let me finish what I was going to say. Darren knew that. He was at the meeting. So what I'm saying is the Board of Health voted to give the staff in the health department, the four of us, an additional 5% raise for the extra job that we're doing um, for, uh, to, since we don't have a wage matrix, which is another discussion we will have at the FY24 budgetary process. <laughs> So the Board of Health voted to reinstate the raises that they already approved within this budget. And then the budget was cut $77,000. So there's, they did approve it. That would cost, that would cost of our current FY23 budget about, let me finish, about $14,000. I have it within my purview as the administrator to not implement those raises because we don't wanna take $14,000 from our FY23 budget when we're trying to hire somebody. However, I had the Board of Health take action on that item. So it was documented and recorded and they were fully aware of that. I had one abstain vote, which was which was Darren because of his, <clears throat> his dual, dual role, role. So just for, uh, so if we were to implement the raises to restore them back to the full 10 and a half percent, which the Board of Health approved in January, that would cost the county $14,124, which is not being implemented. They wanted it to be implemented July 1st. However, I'm holding on to that and not doing that. However, if we don't have the money to hire somebody, then um, my staff does indeed deserve that for the extra duties that they're doing. And I will implement it immediately. See, this is, this is my point of frustration. When we have these conversations, we talk, we talk around things. The bottom line is, is you cut my budget, the health department budget. I don't have the money in my budget. You can say decreased allocation. You can say decreased, however you want to tweak it or whatever verbiage you want to use. The bottom line is my budget had a reduction of allocation of about $77,000.
and that, minus the insurance, not talking about the and insurance. And that still puts us higher than other counties that in our like size. Um, do you know what the turnover rate is mm -hmm. in those counties? Do you know? I, haven't, you do, I said I, previously I hadn't called the smaller counties because I found out that the larger counties, because I wanted to know why their budgets were larger. I can call the small ones this week, but I didn't have time to call them. But um, I would ask if I the would larger ask. ones provide services we don't. D, I know that. Yeah. We're so, not going to be in conflict and competition. So no, I guess I want to focus on services because it really helps me to understand the, you what's being that done with me. Well, you tell have, us all. Tell us all. I, I told you, I tell you that every meeting. You get a report. And you what's get on that report? Because I've seen the visits have, have been decreased. We're not doing home care. We are doing population-based health. Burdette told you that That's when right. she was doing when she was doing the new board of health orientation, she told you that. So this $59,000 of local public health services dollars will pay for salaries. It doesn't pay for services. We are the equipment that does the job. We are the shiny new skid loader. We are the dump truck. We are the new voting machines. We don't have that kind of infrastructure. You have human resources in the health department doing the job. So you get all of that information when I send it to the board of health. You get all of the visits, uh, the services, car seats, child care nurse consultant visits, all of that information. None of this is new. None of it is new. Yeah, I know you do car seats. I'm doing one Tell of us the, about at that. 11 o'clock. Good, so, good. How's um, that going? It's going good. I've done events in you know different counties and eventually want to do an event here. We kind of have a little network where you know, if you if you do have an event, you ask for you know help from other counties. So do you get reimbursed for your time? Is that part of the grant? Um, CCNC is is paying me for car seats. Good. Yes. And you help with other counties as well. Mm -hmm. I helped at Van Buren County, mm -hmm. and we had some Jefferson County people from there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in August. I'm going to go to Keokuk County. We are CCNC. You know, we cover Iowa, Jefferson, and Keokuk mm -hmm. County. I'm going to help their um, public health nurse do it mm -hmm. there. You also um, went to the state fair last year. You're yeah, going to do that this yeah. year. Actually, Michelle went to the state fair, and I'm going to go to the state fair mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, people people call up, they respond to our ad. And today I'm going to do, you know, a family that's going to have a newborn and they have a three-year-old. And they just want to make sure, you know, the dynamics works in the in both of their vehicles. So they're going to bring both vehicles. So in a month, how many do you typically do here in Jefferson County? It, we have, you know, this is kind of new for us. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't really have a month, month by month thing. I did seven when I went to Van Buren County. Personally, I did seven. And then there was two other techs and they probably did, you know, five or seven. And does Van Buren County have a public health? Yes, they And do. it wasn't public health. It was put on by parents, parents as teachers oh, and okay. Tammy Wester. Yeah. Yeah, she is who told me about it and got me connected with, with this group. So, but they are paying for the services when I do it. So I hope for it to grow. Maybe next year we can do something at, um, you know, the fair. You know, I don't know. Again, as I we are just coming out of a yeah. pandemic. We are still giving, we are still giving vaccine. We are coming out of a pandemic. Just so you guys know, the numbers are on the rise in Jefferson County again. We probably had 20 to, cases. Today there was 13. Yeah. So, you know, just so, FYI. And that's not including the rapid tests. You know, I mean, we're the people that don't people test. Are doing yeah. rapid tests. Day. Did, did I hear on the radio that you guys are also going to senior, not senior, you know, yeah. senior center? Yeah. yeah, I went to the senior site and did um, blood pressure checks last week. Mm -hmm. And um, next, I think it's in two weeks, Deb will go and do a program mm -hmm. and blood pressure checks. You might have to come here to do blood pressure checks as well. Well, <laughs> my blood you pressure know, is actually fine. You know, truthfully, if the courthouse wanted us to come over and do mm -hmm. blood pressures, we would do it. I'm going to contact the banks, the local banks, and see, you know, uh -huh. not just to do the people who work at the bank, but anybody yeah. who walks in. Yeah. Um, but we go to Logan, we go to Calhoun, we go to Wagon Wheel, mm -hmm. and now we've added senior site back. We had always, mm -hmm. Deb and I had done a program at, at the senior site. Um, mm -hmm. So that was not new, but they're just now getting back up and running. And yeah. so now we're going to do that again. Yes. Yeah. So it's all population-based health. That is what the mm -hmm. focus is moving forward. It is not individualized health. Mm -hmm. This is nothing that we haven't all discussed or that you get a report mm -hmm. on because you get a report mm -hmm. every every time I send one to the supervised or to the board of health, excuse me, I'm going to send it to you. It's just like writing tickets. Sometimes you catch a lot of people speeding and sometimes you don't. So you never know 
what you're going to get. So. I spent all day in here now the other day. I mean, when you yeah. go out of town to do things, you know, you, you're gone all day. So then that means Mandy's on vacation, you know, mm -hmm. that means limited, limited people. Yep. So, so back to the point of discussion, because I would like to take action on this in some way or another, whether it's funded or not funded, I need to know moving forward. I really don't want to have it on the agenda again for another meeting and have the same discussion and not have an outcome. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I just need it to be decided so we can move on. So are you asking this to be funded from the CARES dollars? There's no, that cares, are there's still... no CARES dollars there. There's okay. zero. The balance is zero according to the according to the uh, according it's to the went email. back to the general fund. Right. But as far as CARES money, it's not sitting there in a in a line item. No, that it was it's before. not. So just for clarification purposes. So that's in time. I guess I hate to change the budget at this point in time. I do too, without an actual written amendment. I just, I mean. I personally think that uh, we as a board need to at least help with what this new budget amendment or whatever when the time comes so you can hire that office person at $20 an hour. I don't know that's going to be $20 an hour, Susie. Yeah. I would try to get it at $20 an hour. You know that. Yeah. I work in public health. We have historically public health departments are, have been. But I think we need to make sure that it's within the current budget. It's not within my FY23 budget. If we're talking about my department budget, there's not enough money to hire somebody. Yeah. Again, I will say that again. There's not enough money in my FY23 <laughs> budget to hire a full time person. There's not. I could cut every line item in that budget. Is there enough for that? No, there's not B. Not moving forward and not knowing exactly my expenditures. I mean, we could drop our computers. We could have something that we need to purchase that we didn't know about. I could pull every dollar out of every line item and present that to you. But then you're going to have to give me a budget amendment for X, Y, or Z. So, mm -hmm. you know, which we can do. However, that's not appropriate budgeting process either. Mm -hmm. So again, it goes back to, to staff. <clears throat> so and so just, is there an action that uh, needs to be taken by the board? Do we feel I, that we need to make an action I at this point in time? Susie? Guys. We told Chris she could advertise for the job. Mm -hmm. I think we need to help a little bit here. But how are we going to fund it? I'm going. I'm concerned that we need to. I suppose with any budget, you've got to always know you've got money coming in, and that's not always the case. You know, grants and budgets don't go together. That's just my opinion. Okay. So what actually do you feel that the board needs to say that uh, would resolve this? Because we can't do it just saying, okay, you know. Yeah, I, I We have to give a justification as to why we would want to do this. Well, last Monday, one week ago, seven days ago, we said, yes, you should be able to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. And today, today we're going to say, oh, yeah, you can still hire somebody, but we're not even going to help with the money. We took $22,000 from Chris's budget, and I understand why we did that. And we fixed the problem so that won't happen again, correct? Yes. But, you know, these guys gave $22,000 to help those the payment of the housing for the young man. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a double standard. But I is there money in the, the budget starting in July to fund that person? Well, you know there's not. 
Um, There's not. There, I mean, I, not with a ten and a half percent raise. That no, has not no been way. implemented, D. I know. That has not been implemented. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want, if we can get you a person, I would not want to get 10 and a half. I understand that, and that won't happen. Yeah. However, I had to have a Board of Health meeting last week, and we had to take action on that in a matrix, which we'll discuss when we have our meeting with Jack. It's yeah. not for this meeting. And, and that's, yeah, I agree with that. This so, time. again, I really... If you're not going to fund it, then I need you to take action that says you're not going to fund. You need to you need to make a motion and vote on it. So I have it so I can take it back to my board. I need official action from this board. Yes or no. If you're going to fund the position or not. It's as simple as that. Yes, I'd feel better if it was part time, if that's possible. I can't guarantee that, D. Well, I know. But is it possible to even try? I don't know. Can it was advertised that? as a full time position. So that's an HR question. Exactly. So again, I don't want to have. I don't want to continue to have this discussion. I really have a department I need to get back to. There's, you know, so I really need to move forward with this. Nobody has time to have the same discussion week after week. It's a simple question: Are you going to fund the position to the full, 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 full time position that was posted, of which you indicated last week at the meeting? However, now it's no. I just need to know. I need to know yes or no. It doesn't matter. We just need to move forward. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. So, you know, she has asked for the money that is left in our department to come back to us for this. And then if there is CARES funding, then why can't you give us that back, that 22? And I, I haven't done the figures with Chris, but that would help, you know, if you did those two things. I mean, I don't get it. I've I, often wondered. As a taxpayer myself, I've lived in, well, I haven't lived in Jefferson County my whole life, but for over half of it. I guess I just and, don't understand. and my question has been if we didn't have if we would not have had a resignation in our department, there wouldn't have been the twenty two thousand dollars to to take from our FY 22 budget. That's the kicking point. That's the sticking point. So if we didn't have the twenty two thousand dollars, where would that money have come from? As a taxpayer, I want an answer to that question, I guess. My concern isn't the $22,000, I understand that. My concern is what happens this next fiscal year is if that's affordable within your budget, and if it is, well, I'm you're okay the ones with that it. fund our budget, D. Right, you're so what I'm saying fund is, our budget. can you afford this person in your budget, then it's fine. Once we provide that 22,000, does that make sense? No. I think you're talking, you're talking will it be funding, not starting July 1st, but July 1st of 24, is that correct? Well, I don't know, we haven't done that budget yet. I, and we don't know, know the that. answer to that question. That's Just to clarify again, I'm gonna reiterate the numbers one more time for the end of the order. The $22,000 was was uh, a transfer of funds from my current budget to pay for the juveniles being held. Again, my question is, if I wouldn't have had the money in my budget, I wouldn't have had the money in my budget had I not has a right, had a resignation. You okay. had two resignations. I did, Darren, but- two full employees. Yes. And you would have had that money in your budget, which was far greater than the $22,000 that was asked to use for paying for housing for juveniles. Correct. Okay, and, and that, so what amount would that have been? And you, this, you seem to skim over that every time we discuss something, as well as you tend to lean on if I had that money, then I would have not had a cut of, of the other money that you gave. I would have had $77,000 to work from, but that's... It's pretty straightforward budgeting, actually, Darren. Um, you know, I don't think the issue is what has happened in the last six months. It's moving forward. Okay. In yeah, FY23, mm -hmm. my current budget that starts July 1st, the numbers again, you guys got this. We've talked about this. Okay, I understand so that. we had a $77,000 difference. However, we add the $20, $28,000 for insurance back into that because that is a new line item mm -hmm. for that insurance amount. So the it looks like there is a $48,000 funding difference, but that's not the case because of the insurance increase. So if you look at the bottom line and you don't look at line item by line item, mm -hmm. it, the cut doesn't look as bad. Mm -hmm. However, the insurance line item, which went from 36,666 
to 65150, that is a line item that cannot be moved and utilized for anything else. Right. That's, that's also line a line item. item that would have been in the Board of Supervisors budget, which means that it was actually hidden from the public how much that money is per department. And that increase was based off of the fact that insurance rates spiked on us. And the county has always augmented the deductibles that people carry on their insurance for every year. And that number has gone up and up and up. It's spiraling out of control. And we wanted to make it more transparent as to how much money each department actually is responsible for when it comes to that type of increase in the overall budget for the county. That's where that number came from, Chris. I understand that, Darren. I'm fully cognizant of that. I'm, I'm saying that for the good of the public. And so, the, so when you look at the bottom line of the budget, it looks similarly, it looks closer than what it actually is if you look at the budget, if you're looking at it that way. Again, Pat, do you want to, can you, are you still listening? Can we, can we move off center here? All I want to know is if they're going to fund it. What do they need to do to move forward? Are, are they going to fund it or are they not going to fund it? Because I'm not going to sit here week after week and continue to have this conversation. Is there something you can help us legally with in addition to the salary line items being adjusted, et cetera, for the good of the order? Please and thank you. Well, I mean, the 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 issue uh, at this point is uh completely up to the board right yeah um, i mean they they yeah. need uh um it's a supervisor's meeting so uh i would say uh board members go ahead and have the conversation amongst yourselves uh you uh don't have to take action there's no legal requirement that you take action on this request uh of you know failure or a, a decision to not take action is still a decision um but uh you know go ahead and uh think the conversation needs to be amongst the three of you in order to reach a, a conclusion today Pat, can i ask one question while you're is it not better i need something to take back to the board of health one way or the other and it's difficult when there's not official action taken on an item the, the request was to utilize cares funding and that is not the case there's no cares funding there so for me moving forward uh, doing my due diligence it, and reporting back to my board, it's it's easier when there's official action taken on an item. I, I understand that, but they're not required to take any no, action. I you have to be legally. That. So, um. <laughs> thank you. So, do do we want to, as a board of supervisor? move forward with any decision today on this. Because I'm not sure where we would bring the money back from in order to fund this for the next fiscal year that starts July 1st. I'd be concerned about it long term. just for the one position you're concerned well, no, about it for I'm long concerned term about if it'll work in the whole budget whether it's this position or any position because our job's the overall dollar amount mm -hmm. and it's the board of health to figure out how to use it so yeah. okay susie do you want to? Yeah, I just want to say something. I think we're sitting in these positions to serve the public and for the good of the county, and we need to take that into consideration. Okay. So, again, I'm going to ask do we, as a board of supervisors, want to make a recommendation of pulling money from our reserve funds? in order to make this happen for the public health department. Because that's where the money would come from. Yeah. Is 22,000 enough? 
Uh, obviously, we've been told no, $22,000 is not enough. Uh -huh. We would have to appropriate more money. And what's been thrown out is that that more money should be about $77,000, not just the $22,000 as requested. I think we're not ready to make that decision today. The same. Okay. I'm I'm feeling the same way that I'm not ready to make that decision today. So One we're, question. we're taking no action at this time on this discussion. So um okay, so I have a question. I have two questions actually. Um one, where are we at with ARPA funding? Because I put in a request for that. And is that something that can be utilized for this position? We haven't Two. finished those discussions. Okay. And ARPA money is a one-time type money, and it wouldn't be able to fund anything on and into the future. So right. we haven't funded anybody to have any pay raises or anything that would augment pay from the ARPA money. Okay, I'm just asking for the okay. good of the order. The other question is, is how would you like me to proceed I guess I'm going to, per your direction, uh, I guess I need to withdraw the um, job posting. And because it's open until the 8th, I left it open until July 8th with the holiday and vacations, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I, I am not going to leave a posting open. I don't know that I can leave it you that. I'm, I'm out of the office next Tuesday. I mean, you can have a discussion, but I'm, I'm on vacation. And we're the day. ones that need to have the discussion. Right. So next Tuesday would be would be fine. Um, we that would a, be oh. July 5th, which would be our next regular board meeting because Monday is July 4th. So just to clarify, is that, is that what you're asking, Susie, is Correct. that we put it on the agenda for Correct. July 5th? Correct. D, are you? I'll be on Zoom, but that's fine. Okay. I can meet too. Um, we will take this discussion up at that time on July 5th. Okay. All right. Okay, and I will be unavailable. Thank for you. Any, and just to clarify, I'll be unavailable for any questions. So, but, even by Zoom. Right. I'm, I'm gone. I'm taking a full day off. Okay. Again, so you want me to hold, you want me to continue to take applications for, for a position. I don't, I don't feel comfortable because doing I, that. I would do that. The, it's, Does that warrant a question to HR? I, I mean, I talk to Jack and see because I we I, have you that, need that. to make sure you've got the money to do it, and that's kind of yeah. that's why I went ahead and posted it last week. Yeah. Yeah. After after you said yes, yeah, so right. Yeah. And last too. week you were told that if it comes out of the existing budget amount that you currently have, then yeah. you could go ahead and move that forward with it. But that was not the choice that was made. And that was what I explained at the Board of Health meeting last Thursday evening, is that you were given a pot of money in order to do what you need to do with the services that you provide and the grants that you get coming in that supplements that amount of money. Okay. And they were under the understanding after I was done that that would be the case even though none of them were happy with anything that I had said that evening, least of which you, Chris. That is correct. So, you know, we're trying to do what we do with all of the other departments when it comes to whether they're giving raises or not, if they can find it in their current fiscal year budget, they can do it. Yes. In the case of the sheriff's department this morning, they have people that are leaving. They still have budget money remaining from what they had budgeted for them in order to do it. You chose to remove those people yes, that left out of your budget. I did completely. not do that, Darren. I so where did that money come from? That I, I just want one okay. point of clarification. I did not remove the money from my budget. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so then not. how come you don't have it now and you're back that, here that, asking? That is a question for the auditor. That is a question for the auditor. I did not, you know how much money the Board of Health, that's the sticking point. This budget was approved by the Board of Health. Right here is the ask. This is this this budget was approved by the Board of Health. It came back decreased. I did not decrease this budget. Somebody, either you guys or the auditor's office, decreased the ask. I did not decrease the ask. 
We Why would that I do that? With other departments. So you're talking well. about service. I'm, I'm, we I will take that under consideration. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, so I, I this is about, coming this back is, to the July 5th no. meeting. It's not and a yes or a no. You just need a little time here. Thank you for your time. We will I will move be this here on. next week and I won't okay. be available by phone. So. All right. Thank you, Chris. Oh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Pat, thank you for yours. I appreciate it. All right. So moving on in the agenda, we are going to um, discuss or we're going to make committee reports since we actually didn't discuss or consider anything with CARES funding at this point. I didn't have any comments last week. I had a 10-15 transit meeting in a Tumwa. I think they finally decided to go ahead and purchase some vehicles for transport, even at high prices. Right? That we'll, we'll be voting on at the next meeting. The other object was they finally found a driver in Kyoto, Iowa, which they thought was fabulous. Because it, what they were having to do is have send somebody over from Oscaloosa to pick to take somebody on from Kyoto, and that, so there was a lot of dead time. Mm -hmm. um, if you drive by 1015 Transit, you can see many vehicles not in working order because they can't get the parts to fix them. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, thank you. All right. I had uh, two meetings last Friday. One was the uh, Southern South Iowa Area Detention Service Agency, which oversees the juvenile detention in Montrose, um, Fort Madison area. Um, we have two people that are currently housed there at this point in time that we're paying the room and board for. Uh, they have some uh, problems with phone systems currently, so it was taken up by the uh, board to allow them to purchase a new set of actual desk phones to connect into their system they have. They get broken by uh, some of the inmates that are there because of just vandalism. Um, and, and they've had, they've had a problem with that. They're addressing those problems, um, with the, um, other meeting that I had, which was held in conjunction with that first meeting is the <laughs> South Iowa area crime commission. Uh, the commission meets twice a year. Uh, this is their second meeting of the year. We meet, uh, in December and we also meet again in the end of June. Um, we talked about, uh, um, we did, uh, spoke about the 20 hour in-service schools that they offer to the, uh, sheriffs and police departments, um, that, uh, they go over. We talked about legal review on cultural diversity, um, implicit bias, uh, constitutional rights of inmates and affirmative duty to, uh, intervene, intercede. Uh, office of the Ombudsman uh, had some questions that they brought down through to us about uh, the different types of funding and where it came from and how it was used. Uh, we provide suicide prevention and awareness, trauma-informed care for first responders, um, psycho, also psychostimulants that goes along with that. The uh, vital information for the Iowa's frontline uh, that we need to provide stigma associated with substance abuse disorder and how to address that. Uh, Bloodborne pathogens, um, PREA and restraint class presented by the Department of Corrections. Okay, and they did those in August in Fairfield, September in Burlington, October in Ottumwa, November in Albia and December in Mount Pleasant is what their schedule is for this year. Uh, so we have that coming up. We have a 40 hour basic jailer course 
uh, that's offered. Um, there's uh, 16 of them that are certified and July 2022 schedule is what we talked about. Um, implicit bias and uh, DNA submission added to comply with jailer certification requirements, which is going to be coming up. Um, we also talked about uh, mediation management. Um, um, we also talked about uh, fire evacuation training and how that's handled in uh, not only down at the uh, uh, jail in Montrose and Fort Madison, but with five counties and the counties that have been completed with this so far are Davis, Keokuk, Monroe, Van Buren, and Washington. So Jefferson County should be coming up here before too long for that type of training. Um, and then uh, we talked about the juvenile project operations update, um, the current 2022 fiscal year budget review. Um, we're on track to be under what we had budgeted uh, for the 2022 fiscal year, which is ending on June 30th. Uh, our numbers were shown to us as only being current through the uh, 15th of uh, June, so we had another 15 days to go, which is kind of negligible when you're talking about a uh, near $300,000 budget for that group. Um, we talked about uh, summary of transports that they've done bringing juveniles to court in various locations from where they're being housed at and how that's done. Transport administration, administrative cost history was also shown to us. Vehicle fuel maintenance cost summary was also brought up uh, because of the added expense of what gasoline costs right now. Uh, we had a vehicle that was totaled out this previous year, and we are in the process of trying to purchase a new vehicle. Um, they currently use uh, Ford Tauruses, but Tauruses are not going to be made um, this next year from Ford. So we're trying to move to a different vehicle. Most of the vehicles that are out there now are SUV sized vehicles. Uh, currently they're looking at a Chevy Equinox to uh, replace the vehicle that was totaled. Uh, and again, that'll come out of the existing budget that they have for all the vehicles. Um, and we discussed and considered policy updates on Title, title 4-6, on-call pay and 4-8, uh, meal reimbursements and um, 3-4 procurement practices. And um, we've had several transports that went from Montrose all the way to Sioux City recently because of reassignment of court activities with those individuals. Um, that's an awful long trip. If you try to do that in a day, it's at least a 12 hour round trip in the vehicle alone besides whatever court time and everything happens up there and whether or not people should be allowed overnight accommodations, if that's the case for them. And then also overnight accommodations for the person that they're taking to whatever service they're taking them to up there. Um, we'll be fronted, confronted with that similar situation with a change of venue for the uh, mm -hmm. trials that were to be held here in Jefferson County. I believe they're being moved over to Council Bluffs. I asked the question as to whether they were going to be doing the transporting uh, when it comes to that or whether our Sheriff's Department would be responsible for the transporting. They are wanting to do the transporting of those over there and then probably have to find housing for them during the trial time period going on over in Council Bluffs, not only for them, but also the sheriff's deputies that we have to provide um, when we take someone like that to court. So we have a few of those things on, on the horizon for us when it comes through the uh, Crime Commission. So uh, that's my committee report. Um, sounds like we're done with the committee reports. Do we have any public comments? We still have on with us Tom Derish, Marianne Nordyke, 
Deb Book and Kelly Spees, as well as Pat McVan, our assistant, our assistant county attorney. Uh, we have any comments from anyone here in the room with us today? When you uh, done your budget, did you take a certain percentage out of each department, or did you go line by line and just decrease whenever you was doing your budget? When we go through the budgets, we look at what people have spent in particular line items over the years and whether they have uh, not spent anywhere close to what they had budgeted for. We've always recommended cuts in those locations in order to try to reduce the overall budget and keep the uh, tax levy down for people. We did that starting the first year that I came onto the Board of Supervisors, we found nearly $200,000, maybe a little over $200,000 of all the budgets in the county that could be reduced from what we had because we found that there was a lot of money being given back at the end of the year that we felt wasn't necessary to do. Um, we asked that all the budgets uh, be looked at in that manner some departments chose to do that. Others departments decided that they were just gonna keep giving them the numbers that they did previously. And so we went ahead and made cuts based off of that. Um, I think Dee and I worked pretty hard on that. I know Lee was involved in that. When he was here, his first two, my first two years, uh, we continued it again this year. And that's how we tend to look at the budget as far as I'm concerned as a supervisor, because if you continually pad your budget and don't use those numbers and then be able to sit here and say, I always give back money at the end of the year, you're really not being honest of how you're using that money throughout the year when it comes to the county taxpayer. So that's my answer to your question. Okay. Yeah. So on the board, on the health department, did you take into consideration the two resignations and just cut there or did you? No, we had no idea that those resignations were coming during that okay. fiscal they year. Were, they were and that money was budgeted for those two individuals to continue on through the year. Now we're being told that that wasn't budgeted, um, but that would only be included into the 2023 fiscal year budget because it was only showed that they had four employees, not the six total. When an employee is gone from a department for the remainder of the fiscal year, they can uh, use that money to hire someone new if they want to, such as what the sheriff's department did. And that person stays on for the budget for the next fiscal year because you have a total number of employees in that situation. Now, as far as what their salaries and that stuff are, are concerned with, with the public health, yes, it's not within our right to go through and say, we're just cutting that item from the budget. We look at the overall number of the budget. And if the person that's in, the, in charge of that department does not re reflect that their total um, personnel needs to be six, and they only show that their total personnel is four, we are not budgeting money for those other two positions coming the next fiscal year because they don't report they need them at that time. They don't ask for the appropriation at that time. So when the treasurer's office wanted to uh, change to where they had a uh, designation of deputy, for all their employees and they were bringing people up to that designation. They were taking it from the total budget number that they were authorized through the budgeting time period in order to do that. They weren't coming and asking for more money to be appropriated from um, our, our fund balances that the county is required to keep on hand every year. And we also get questioned many times by, uh, say, the Farm Bureau as to why our fund balances may be so high. Why not reduce the property tax levy in order to bring those more in line? 
Now, when I first started, we were running very low on our fund balances. We didn't have money in there to do anything in an emergency situation or uh, that type of thing. And we brought the fund balances back to where they need to be through a lot of those budget cuts. It sounds kind of counterproductive, but that's how it really works is because once you start looking at your overall budget and you decide what that is uh, and you bring that to the board, then you need to also consider is that over budgeting when this year it cost me um, $5,000 on a line item that I budgeted $22,000 for, okay? That difference then would go into what your excess is with your budget. And if you don't spend that or use that for other line items in your budget during that time period, as a administrator of that, then that would be returned back to the uh, general fund, which goes into the fund balances that we currently have. And so that's how we were able to increase those balances to where we're at. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, to allow claims and approve reports. All right, um, we'll allow claims and approve reports. Uh, I have a motion from Sandquist. Second. A second from Grish. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. All right. Um, we're going to now move into a uh, closed session. Let me get my section out here. We are going to move into closed session per Section 21.5, closed sessions, uh, section J, to discuss the purchase or sale of a particular real estate only where premature disclosure could be reasonably expected to increase the price of the governmental body to have to pay for that property or reduce the price of the governmental body would receive for that property the minutes and the audio recording of that session closed under this paragraph shall be available for public examination when the transaction is discussed or completed. Um, motion to go into closed session. Shall I have a motion from Sandquist, a second from Drish to move into closed session. All those in favor signify by roll saying call. aye. Oh, excuse me. This is a roll call vote. Sandquist. Yes. Drish. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Okay, we'll move into closed session. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>